NASA has delayed the return to the moon. There, that's it. Video over. <laughs> Actually, NASA had a press conference on January 9th and gave us a ton of new information, updates and even some breaking Starship news. I'm going to break it down for you. Let's get into it. Let's kick this off with what we learned about Artemis 2, which was initially planned for the end of 2024. NASA announced in this press conference that Artemis 2 is now planned for September 2025. As you probably know, the crew is named already and is preparing and training for the mission. In comparison to Artemis 1, this mission will be much more complex, which mostly comes down to the fact that it will feature crew. That means that it needs life support and of course the whole loading and unloading of the crew onto the Orion vehicle. In the process of all this, as we remind everybody at every turn, safety is our top priority. And to give Artemis teams more time to work through the challenges with first-time developments, operations, and integration, we're going to give more time on Artemis 2 and 3. As you may recall, Artemis 1 launched on November 16, 2022, and now one of the major concerns was Orion's heat shield. A review of the heat shield from Artemis 1 is still ongoing. During the first flight of SLS, Artemis 1 engineers observed some liberation of heat shield material that was unexpected. Of course, some lost heat shield was expected, as the material it is made of is designed to be ablative. But it seems a few chunks came off unexpectedly, so NASA has chosen to investigate this. Which is good. The heat shield is critical for crew safety, and that should always be the highest priority. We have to synthesize that data and update the overall thermal, mechanical, and material models of that heat shield to make sure that before we attempt re-entry from a circumlunar return mission like we'll have from Artemis 2, that we're 100% confident that we understand the performance of that heat shield under those conditions. We've been able to replicate the physics and we expect it to definitively identify the root cause of this, this recession of the char material, hopefully here in the spring. Another issue that came up that threatens the timeline of Artemis 2 is a problem with the life support system. Specifically, it is about the motors that drive some of the valves in that system. During testing for the Artemis 3 mission, some of the electric circuits caused issues. The same motors passed initial acceptance testing for Artemis 2, but of course, with issues now known, they want to further investigate the issue. This item was identified as the critical path item for the timeline of September 2025 as they need time to remove the circuit, investigate, fix it, replace it and then integrate and test again. Once we recognized design flaw and we, once we looked at rationale for potentially using the system as is, it became very clear to us that it was unacceptable to accept that hardware and we have to replace it in order to guarantee the safety of the crew. A third issue is a qualification test of the battery inside Orion, which was subjected to the full shock it would see where the spacecraft has to separate from SLS in a worst case situation. The NASA team wants to take additional time to investigate this scenario and to cross out any potential issues in such a scenario. We have multiple parallel options to fix this issue and we have a lot of testing to do in front of us, but we wanted to make sure we give ourselves the time to do that and as, as we mentioned before continuing our analysis the crew safety is going to d drive our decision making there on that subject. We saw reports months ago that this delay has been coming and this is just the final confirmation. It is more about how long this delay would be rather than whether it would happen or not. A report published by NASA's Office of Inspector General indicated NASA had estimated it needed 27 months between Artemis 1 and Artemis 2 to be able to take out avionics hardware from Artemis 1 Orion and reuse it on Artemis 2 Orion. With the new launch timeframe, the gap between Artemis 1 and 2 is 34 months now and could widen if it's delayed further. In the end, the avionics reuse was not the issue and it's other things mostly concerning crew safety. Delaying Artemis 2 of course snowballs into a delay for Artemis 3 as well. Although it is not the only reason why this mission will be delayed. 
Starship, the spacesuit and the overall status of all hardware are the reasons this mission is now targeting September 2026 for the return of humanity to the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. After all, a ton of new technology will be needed for Artemis 3 versus 2. NASA talks about propellant transfer, HLS itself, the spacesuits, docking capabilities and life support. All of these things are critical for the mission to succeed and some of them have timeline issues. And not any single one of them is more important than the other. We need them all to be ready and all to be successful in order for that very complicated mission to, to come together. NASA also points out that the timeline of September 2026 is still very aggressive or to translate more delays could be expected. After all, the lander and spacesuit are still in an early phase and they are both critical. After all, you can't just work out of your lander in your Sunday best. In terms of other hardware, the European Service Module ESM, does not seem to be on the critical path. The third ESM is expected to leave Bremen and ship to the Cape in just three months from now. The upper stage for the Space Launch System rocket is already delivered and booster segments are ready to go as well. Furthermore, the core stage is progressing well. Our Philips Laws talk with the team building SLS. We're, we're to the point now where you're like a pre-flight checklist. Yes, I got the tooling. Yes, the facilities are there. Yep, I'm, I'm, I've got all my engineering release. I'm, I'm, I've got hardware coming in. I got workers' trucks being re released, right? So it's in that, in that right before execution phase of trying to make sure all this stuff is in place to go, we're ready. Speaking of SLS, if you want cool merch to celebrate your love for SLS, check out shop.nasaspaceflight.com. Link in the description. Overall, while initially assumed to be a timeline problem for Artemis, SLS has moved out of the critical path and is no longer an item of worry for the Artemis program's timeline. But Starship on the other hand? Jessica Jensen, VP of Customer Operations and Integrations for Starship, provided us with some great insight into what is planned for Starship on the HLS side. An advantage of Starship being part of the Artemis program after all. As of now, Starship still has a lot of tests ahead of the Artemis program. SpaceX needs to develop a ship-to-ship -ship fueling mechanism in orbit to refuel the lander before going to the moon. A header tank to main tank demonstration is still planned in 2024 in one of the upcoming Starship flights, although she did not confirm if it was the upcoming third flight as initially planned. We're working um, ground tests right now and a lot of what we do for cryogenic propellant transfer on the ground, translating that to what we do up in space. And what's so great about this is because we'll be doing it through a flight test perspective, we'll learn on the flight first flight test, you know, how much propellant is actually transferred versus what we predict. We can make changes then on the ground for the next flight and iterate, and that will actually wind up determining how many missions we need. Down the line, SpaceX then will upscale the system to be able to refuel from ship to ship. They expect it to need a retank amount in a tense for a moon mission, although that does not seem to be set in stone based on this press conference. Regarding the voice about such a complex system, the SpaceX spokesperson explained that a lot of the necessary steps for in-orbit refueling are already performed by SpaceX. This includes things like in-orbit docking, as performed with Dragon, or high launch cadence as they do with Falcon 9. It's a matter of putting all the pieces together for the puzzle. Another update we got was on the timeline of the uncrewed Luna demo. While initially planned for 2024, this is now planned for 2025. In this, SpaceX will perform all the steps it needs to perform for Artemis 3, just without the crew to verify the HLS works. And finally, we got some great confirmation about the upcoming Flight 3. As of now, SpaceX expects to reach hardware readiness by January and is still working with the FAA to receive a launch license for the third flight in February. The last big block of announcements in this concerned Artemis 4 and Gateway. Artemis 4 as of now remains mostly untouched. Gateway is the space station that NASA will use as an in-orbit HQ for the Artemis exploration plans. It will be launched by commercial rockets, including Falcon Heavy. But with it being planned for September 2028, a lot can happen between now and then. Gateway on the other side, which will be used for Artemis 4, will delay a bit. NASA did not confirm yet when exactly it is now planned, but they confirmed it needs about 12 months from being launched to being used for Artemis 4. 
that leaves no later than around September 2027. Delays to the gateway launches are not really surprising. As with Artemis 2 and Artemis 3, these delays were already reported previously. For Artemis 4 to remain on track, NASA needs to have a lot of things ready, so even this date could be questionable. Block 1B needs to debut for Artemis 4, so NASA needs the exploration upper stage developed and completed for flight. And Mobile Launcher 2 needs to also be completed and tested on time. The flyovers have seen the start of Mobile Launcher 2 build up, but it's not an indication that things will be done on time. The IHAP module for Gateway is also supposed to launch on this mission. That's another watch item. Would NASA delay Artemis 4 if IHAP is not ready? Who knows? Artemis 4 will also have the upgraded HLS Starship that holds 4 people instead of 2 and is more reusable. No big details have been communicated about that yet. We're in a golden era of exploration and this time we are going back to the moon in order to be able to learn, to live, to create and to invent in order that eventually we can go to Mars. After all, we all want to see humans return to the moon. But it is a complex problem that a lot of parties try to solve here. So the delay has been coming and getting confirmation and proper communication, that's a win for us all. When do you think the Artemis free landing will happen? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Adrian Bauer for NSF. See you next time.